Envision yourself returning to the house of your youth, a location brimming with happy memories and familiar views, only to discover that something is missing. Something about the room makes you feel uneasy. The colors are subdued, the furniture is slightly off, and there's no clear reason why. Sigmund Freud's idea of the uncanny revolves around this unsettling feeling, when the familiar takes on an oddly foreign quality. As Freud peels back the layers of what we perceive as normal, he uncovers the unnerving depths underneath, delving into the hidden and troubling parts of reality. When something familiar and pleasant suddenly becomes strange and strange, Freud's idea of the uncanny or das Unheimlich in German captures this unsettling sensation. As a result of this metamorphosis, the shadowy parts of reality that we would rather not face or deny become apparent. It's like a curtain has been pulled back, revealing a bizarre and unsettling reality. Uncanny experiences stem from a psychological phenomena that causes people to lose track of what is familiar and what is strange. This, according to Freud, is the result of our unconscious mind's suppressed fears or wants being triggered by external stimuli. A startling unease is caused when these repressed aspects, which we have buried deep inside our minds, suddenly come to the surface in surprising ways. The eerie arises from the abrupt encounter with these latent parts of our being. The idea of the double or doppelganger might be helpful in making sense of the eerie, according to Freud, who said that seeing one's own mirror, twin, or even a mannequin can cause extreme anxiety. A part of ourselves that we cannot completely comprehend or manage is symbolized by the double, and this understanding causes us to feel uneasy. The double is an unfamiliar yet strange reflection of our own individuality that has shown itself independently. When we face our shadow selves head on, we have to face aspects of ourselves that we would rather not. And that may be terrifying. The eerie may also be seen in cases when inanimate things appear to have a life of their own. Imagine a robot that acts just a bit too human, or a doll with eyes that seem to follow you everywhere you go. The normally dead and passive things get a creepy vibrancy that makes it hard to tell them apart. The haunting animation serves as a sobering reminder of our own transience and the razor-thin line that divides the living from the dead. In this way, the eerie acts as a sobering reminder of how frail we are and how death hangs over our heads at all times. Additionally, Freud linked the eerie to things that happen in childhood and the hazy boundary between reality and fantasy that is common during that time. The lines between reality and fantasy tend to blend when children are involved, thanks to their active imaginations. They may have paranormal experiences, such as seeing monsters in the dark or toys that come to life. Even while we often outgrow such views as adults, there may be some unconscious holdover from our childhood dreams and worries. We get the unsettling feeling when we meet circumstances that remind us of our childhood anxieties. It's like those wild dreams we had as kids are reappearing, triggering our memories of how blurry the line is between fact and fantasy. A strong instrument for creating an air of mystery and dread, the eerie also has a substantial impact in literary and artistic works. Gothic literature is characterized by spooky settings, spectral figures, and haunted homes. All of these things make us feel lost and terrified because they play on our worst fears. Surrealist paintings, which warp reality and question our familiarity with it, also display elements of the eerie in visual art. The disturbing imagery created by artists, such as Salvador Dali and René Magritte, combine the ordinary with the extraordinary, compelling us to face the concealed parts of our own minds. The uncanny's power to expose the dark and unsettling sides of human nature is one of its most alluring features. When we experience the strange, it compels us to face our darkest, most hidden thoughts, desires, and anxieties. It makes us question our reality and shows how easily our views may be skewed. The eerie might be seen as a reflection of our darker sides, revealing aspects of ourselves that we would want to keep hidden. The intricate connection between the conscious and unconscious mind is further demonstrated by Freud's investigation of the supernatural. As our suppressed feelings and ideas surge to the surface, shaking up our sense of routine, 
The eerie emerges as a result of the conflict between these two domains. This conflict is inherent to being human and reflects the dynamic interaction between our logical, conscious selves and the illogical, unconscious forces that impact our actions and thoughts. Another thing the eerie can teach us about human psychology is how fears work. When we're afraid, it's not only because of outside dangers, it's also because of struggles within and the unknown parts of our own thinking. By appealing to this base instinct, the eerie manages to evoke a dread that is at once uniquely human and shared by all people. In particular, it serves as a reminder that the aspects of ourselves over which we have the least control are frequently the sources of our deepest anxieties. Technological advancements and the rise of AI have given contemporary ideas about the supernatural new depth. The boundary between the real and the artificial has become increasingly porous due to the proliferation of VR and realistic robotics, opening up new avenues for the eerie to manifest. Anxieties can run deep when faced with a robot that mimics human features and movements nearly to a T. This phenomena, which has a name, the uncanny valley, shows how technology progress may appeal to our baser instincts and worries about things like our own humanity, the unknown, and our own identity. The existential and ethical concerns brought up by AI and the limits of human identity are brought to light by the eerie in this setting. The eerie will challenge our senses and make us cope with the deeper consequences of our inventions as technology advances. It will likely play a more significant part in our lives. At its core, the eerie is an evocative and complex idea that exposes the underlying complexity of being human. It muddies the lines between what's known and what's unknown, between reality and fantasy, and between awareness and unconsciousness. Freud revealed the deepest recesses of the human mind through his investigations into the supernatural, illuminating the hopes and nightmares that influence how we see the world. There is a weird and familiar world beneath the surface of our regular lives, and the eerie serves as a reminder of this. This world continues to terrify and captivate us. This is how the eerie is a philosophical phenomena in addition to a psychological one. It questions everything we thought we knew about the world, ourselves, and terror. It makes us face our own subconscious and the intricate relationship between our conscious and unconscious thoughts. Something about the human condition is inherently mysterious, and the unexplained and unsettling nature of the strange attests to this. The eerie is a powerful reminder of the depths underneath our senses as we traverse the intricacies of modern life. A call to accept the uncomfortable realities that define our world, to face our worst fears, and to venture into the unknown. The strange and unnerving beauty of our own brains is revealed on the uncanny voyage, which takes us into the core of the human predicament. Not only does the weird pervade our psychic landscape, but it also pervades our cultural and social context with its peculiar combination of familiarity and alienation. Urban legends, folk tales, and myths live in the recesses of our collective mind. By showing mundane places or things that conceal incredible, and sometimes terrifying, secrets. These stories frequently evoke the eerie. Tales of haunted houses, spectral apparitions, and unexplained happenings bring the eerie to life, appealing to our baser anxieties. Think about the traditional story of the haunted home. A house that is normally warm and welcoming turns into a terrifying place. Even the most familiar place may become a terrifying maze when you add in creepy sounds, dim lighting, and spectral whispering. This change from benign to malevolent captures the spirit of the eerie. The house itself isn't scary. What it represents a history of suppressed feelings is, just as Freud characterized the eerie as the resurfacing of repressed fears and desires, the uncanny experience in these stories compels the characters, and, by extension, the audience to confront the unresolved past. Edgar Allan Poe is a literary genius at using the eerie to strike fear and psychological disquiet. An unsettling feeling of truth permeates his stories as the boundary between fact and imagination becomes increasingly porous. The crumbling home in The Fall of the House of Usher seems to be alive, reflecting the character's mental breakdown. 
As a house transforms into a symbol of insanity and death, the eerie reality that our own brains may be as dangerous as any outside force becomes disturbingly clear. Even if Franz Kafka's writings are more introspective and bureaucratic, they still explore the eerie. The main character, Gregor Samsa, in The Metamorphosis, finds himself changed into a terrible bug when he wakes up. Both Gregor's existence and the reader's perception of reality are upended by this hideous metamorphosis of the familiar human shape into an alien one. By making us doubt the solidity of our own identities and the subjective character of social standards, Kafka's story transports us into the eerie. Like literature, art frequently employs dreamy and surreal images to delve into the eerie. Salvador Dali and René Magritte are surrealist painters who construct unreal worlds with porous and misleading borders. Dali's twisted landscapes and melting clocks make us feel uneasy and disoriented because they question the way we perceive time and space. The familiar objects and settings in Magritte's paintings are made to look at new angles by his disquieting juxtapositions. The strange takes shape in these pieces as a result of the connections and hidden meanings that are revealed via the ordinary aspects of existence. Directors like as David Lynch and Alfred Hitchcock have used the uncanny to create psychologically intricate and scary films. In his film Psycho, Alfred Hitchcock turns a rundown hotel into a terrifying and psychologically intriguing place. The classic shower scene in the film is shocking for more than simply the violent deed. The familiarity and routineness of the pastime are destroyed in the process. The dreamy, surreal landscapes that Lynch creates in his films like Blue Velvet and Mulholland Drive make the familiar scene dangerous and reality hazy. Lynch frequently uses seemingly perfect suburban settings to introduce sinister undertones of murder and depravity, creating an eerie atmosphere throughout her work. The eerie is adapting to the digital age in unexpected ways, thanks to the proliferation of new technologies. When we come into contact with computer-generated individuals or robots that look nearly human but not quite, the uncanny valley phenomenon kicks in. Because we are faced with an organism that appears similar, but is actually quite different, the near-human resemblance causes an unsettling sensation. The uncanny valley brings to light our long-suppressed fears regarding human nature and the possibility that technology may one day equal or exceed human capabilities. The mysterious may also flourish in the realms of VR and R. These innovations make it harder to tell the difference between the virtual and the real leading to exhilarating and terrifyingly immersive encounters. When immersed in a virtual world, the usual constraints of reality dissolve, allowing the eerie to manifest in surprising ways. Unease can be heightened by encounters with digital environments that change abruptly or by virtual avatars who imitate our actions too closely, echoing the more profound philosophical inquiries that the eerie brings up. These encounters make us wonder about the truth and our role in it. Another useful perspective for analyzing modern political and social problems is the uncanny. Underneath our communal consciousness, it may show us our deepest fears and tensions. As an example, how people react to people who are different from themselves, whether they are immigrants, refugees, or just plain weird reveals their dread of the supernatural. Some find these communities unsettling because they disrupt established norms and bring up long-suppressed anxieties about one's own identity, safety, and place in the world. Here, the eerie serves as a tool for investigating the limits of what is considered familiar and what is considered alien, as well as inclusion and exclusion. The existential fears of the modern world can be better understood via the lens of the strange, the conventional societal systems might appear unstable and unstable in this era of fast technological progress, environmental catastrophes, and social turmoil. As we go through a world where the old certainties are crumbling and new doubts are rising to the surface, a feeling of instability develops, and with it, the eerie. The deeper existential issues that the eerie inspires, such as, who are we, are reflected in this pervading discomfort. In this vast universe, where do we fit? How can we make sense of both the known and the unknown? Thus, the eerie, as Freud saw it, 
is a potent instrument for deciphering the nuances of the human condition. It exposes the depths of our minds, the unspoken aspirations and anxieties that mold our view of the world. At its core, it is a struggle to face the paradoxes and ambiguities of our own existence. By delving into the macabre, we may better understand the complex relationship between the known and the unknown, the conscious and the unconscious, the actual and the fantastical. The inherent mystique of both our own thoughts and the universe is brought to light in this investigation. When we experience the strange, it's like seeing into the dark recesses of our own minds. This piece beautifully captures the timeless allure of fear and imagination, showcasing how our imaginations can elevate the mundane to the miraculous and the familiar to the mysterious. No matter how much we try to pin down the strange word, it just serves to highlight how porous reality's borders really are. The seemingly ordinary may take on an otherworldly quality in a moment, exposing the intricate and disturbing realities lurking beneath. Embracing these secrets and venturing into the unknown is what the eerie urges us to do. Inspiring yet horrifying at the same time, it delves into the very essence of humanity. The eerie, with all its paradoxes and complexities, reflects the human experience in the end. It serves as a constant reminder that nothing is ever really known and that the familiar might suddenly transform into the unfamiliar. This eerie possibility that lurks around every corner makes us conscious of the hidden truths, compelling us to probe under the surface and face the shadowy sides of our own being. A call to accept and revel in life's enigmas, to see the strange beauty in our shared humanity. Even in our most intimate relationships and group dynamics, we find ourselves engrossed with the strange, having to face the fact that other individuals have brains just as complicated and mysterious as our own is kind of unpleasant. This idea, which is sometimes called the otherness of other people, has the potential to make people feel distant and alone. This might happen when a loved one acts in an out-of-character way, or when we experience a fleeting inability to identify our own reflection in the mirror. These incidents show how strange our personal connections and identities are and they imply that deeper than the surface level of our daily encounters is a realm of unspoken emotions, intentions, and ideas. From a psychoanalytic perspective, this clumsiness in interpersonal relationships is related to Freud's theory of the return of the repressed, which states that aspects of our personality that we have pushed to the side because they are unpleasant or distressing might sometimes reappear, albeit in a masked form. When we engage with other people, these suppressed feelings might surface, leading us to internalize their problems. As an example, we may unknowingly feel threatened or hostile toward another person because we perceive a quality in them that we have suppressed inside ourselves. The projection's creepiness stems from the fact that it shows how interconnected our internal and external realities are by erasing boundaries between the two. Dreams where the supernatural frequently manifests in the most shocking ways, provide a clear illustration of this interconnectedness. There is no hard and fast rule about what counts as genuine in a dream. The familiar may become the unusual with relative ease. It is not uncommon for a dream to begin in a familiar, reassuring place before shifting to a strange, disturbing scene where logic and physical principles do not exist, because they reveal our deepest, darkest, most subconscious wants and anxieties. These dream experiences have the power to arouse a strong feeling of the supernatural. The eerie aspects of dreams, according to Freud, lead us to the depths of our unconscious and reveal important truths about ourselves. In addition, the eerie may be considered as a mirror of the existential fears that people experience every day. Whether it's the secrets of our own brains, the randomness of the environment, or the inevitability of death, we are always faced with the unknown. Uncertainty is an illusion, and we are always navigating a world of hidden depths and unanticipated twists. The eerie embodies this existential torment. Jean Paul Sartre, Martin Heidegger, and other existentialist philosophers have investigated the existential ambiguity and uncertainty of human life, and their work echoes this existential aspect of the eerie. Consider Sartre's nausea, which encapsulates a comparable existential confusion. 
The protagonist in his eponymous work feels profoundly uneasy and alienated as he becomes vividly aware of how reality is arbitrary and contingent. Similar to how the eerie may throw off our perceptions by exposing the latent strangeness in what seems familiar, this knowledge shakes up his feeling of control and comfort. As it stresses the pervasiveness of our mortality and how it molds our perception of life, Heidegger's concept of being toward death thus resembles the eerie. Thus, the eerie is a profoundly philosophical phenomena as well as a psychological one. It forces us to face the depths of our own awareness and the boundaries of our knowledge. It makes us wonder where the lines between the familiar and the unfamiliar lie, as well as about our own identities and the nature of reality itself. Delving into the eerie allows us to confront the deepest secrets of being human, illuminating the complex and frequently unpleasant aspects of our own being and the universe we inhabit. A strong and ubiquitous force, the eerie persists throughout modern civilization. One example is the widespread appeal of horror films, which frequently employ eerie visuals and sound effects to keep audiences on the edge of their seats. These movies exploit our worst fears by showing us everyday things in a distorted and evil light. Many horror stories have elements that appeal to the unearthly, such as a haunted home, a possessed doll, or an unsettling double. We may face our concerns and investigate our shadow sides in a safe setting by losing ourselves in these stories. In a same vein, we may now interact with the supernatural in novel ways thanks to the proliferation of virtual reality and immersive theater. In certain settings, the line between fact and fiction becomes more porous, allowing the familiar to seem odd and the unusual to seem familiar. They let us delve into the depths of our own wants and concerns through a direct and emotional connection with the supernatural. This is how they provide us a one-of-a-kind venue for introspection and discovery. They beckon us to face the secrets inside. Modern and contemporary art also makes use of the eerie, and it does so in a way that makes us think deeply about ourselves and the world around us. Mysteries of the supernatural help artists probe questions of self-definition, memory, and the finite nature of time. Works by these artists make us doubt our perceptions of reality and the validity of our own understandings of the universe. Artistic explorations of the eerie serve as a constant reminder that even the most familiar things are seldom as simple as they seem, and that there is always more going on behind the scenes. In the end, the eerie serves as evidence of the eternal mystique and intricacy of being human. It discloses our innermost thoughts and feelings, the unspoken aspirations and anxieties that influence how we see the world. It compels us to face the paradoxes and ambiguities inherent in being human, to venture into the unknown and accept the uncomfortable realities that shape our life. That is why the strange may be both terrifying and illuminating. It's not all about the terror. The eerie is still a great way to look at the human condition as we deal with the complexity of modern life. As a result, we should be aware that the familiar might give way to the unusual at any moment and that the limits of reality are not as solid as they appear. Interacting with the supernatural takes us on a harrowing and illuminating trip into the core of humanity. Exploring the depths of our own brains, this voyage unveils the uncanny beauty and deep mystery of our own existence, pushing us to go beyond what meets the eye.